Well, hello, hello. I'm Jane Hogan, the wellness engineer. Welcome to Wellness by Design today. We are talking about restoring your health with coffee enemas. I know it's a funny subject. It might seem like a funny subject. My daughter's visiting and she said, really, you're going to be talking about coffee enemas? And I'm like, I know that they're supposed to be good. I've never done one, but I've got a guest today who's an expert in coffee enemas. I'm really excited to welcome Eileen Durfee. Did I pronounce that properly? It's Durfee. Durfee, Durfee. Okay, yeah. Eileen Durfee. Welcome Eileen to Wellness by Design today. I'm really thrilled to have you. Well, thank you for having me. <laughs> it's a good subject to talk about. Yeah, and you know, not everyone uh, wants to talk about it, but I think when people hear what you've got to say today, they're going to be really opened up to um, the health benefits of these. So I'm, I'm really excited. So let's hear a little bit about your background. I, I was really intrigued because you're an engineer like me. You form formerly worked as an engineer in a nuclear power plant, right? That's correct. Actually, all over the United States during the construction era, Florida, California, Kansas, Texas, Illinois. Ah, okay. So uh, I'll just tell people a little bit about you. Eileen Durfee, now I see there's no wire in there, is a former nuclear power plant engineer, inspector, auditor, and real estate builder and developer who became sick due to chemical exposure. And this is a real thing, my friends. A lot of people aren't aware of it, but you can get sick from chemical exposure. She suffered from chronic pain, allergies, Hashimoto's, hypothyroidism, and a lack of energy to live a fulfilling life. These symptoms were the result of her body not eliminating the toxins to which she was regularly exposed. She tried a variety of medications, diets, therapies, and more to help recover her health. On a quest to heal her body, she discovered what solutions worked and wanted to use her knowledge and experience to help others. I get that. I get that. Her journey to overcome her own health issues led her to become an inventor and businesswoman. Okay, Eileen, this is so intriguing. So our bodies are pretty amazing, right? In that they can deal with a whole lot and can, it can detox from a lot of things. But this repeated chemical exposure that you had, like what was it that all of you knew you had pain and so on. How did you link this to the chemical exposure? Well, it took me many years, you know, to figure that out. But back in the day when I was working in construction at nuclear power plants, it's not like today where OSHA will, you know, have the companies monitor air quality and make you have, you know, fresh air hoods or anything like that. And, you know, your number one exposure is inhaling Right. all these fumes and toxins. And I, at first I thought my whole problem was candida, you know, and leaky gut and allergies. And it wasn't until years later, until about 2011, I was just trying a, a new thing because I was my own guinea pig, just trying yeah. everything just because of that underlying feeling that, you know, if my body just had what it needed, that it could heal itself. Which and, is the truth. And so I came across hair analysis and started taking the recommended supplements. And they uh, recommended a lot of protocols like coffee enemas. That's when I first got introduced to it. And near bread saunas and these things to help open up these elimination pathways. And it was then after being on that program for a while was seeing my lab results that my lack of energy was because my body had accumulated all these toxins, heavy metals, utilizing them in cell enzyme binding sites, you know, to work like duct tape and bailing wire in a jalopy. They gave mm -hmm. some function, but not very much function. So every adaptation the body does, it consumes energy. So all this fatigue and everything else. And as I began peeling my body like layers of an onion, mm -hmm. going through this process, I started regaining my energy and vitality and certain diseases, you know, vanished. It's like 
you know, when the body has new car parts and it sells, it's amazing what it can do. Right. So like I said, it was a many long year process to really realize that that's what was going on. But yeah, it was key. Wow. Okay. So what would you say? We'll get into what a coffee enema is in a moment. But but first of all, just for the people listening, people that are watching, what are some signs of chemical toxicity? Not sleeping well and waking up tired. Oh, wow. Being, being, being tired. Um, that's the number one sign that your cells don't have the right elements in them, you know, to function. That's an early warning sign. It seems like almost everybody, you know, is complaining about that because we're living in the 21st century. We're always having things to do, not enough time to do things. So we'll have a tendency to push ourselves, you know, unexplained rashes, you know, indigestion, just underactive, um, you know, gut, all these things are a sign that you've got a, a stressed out adrenal gland and thyroid gland. Those are the two major energy production glands in the body. And 80% of people tested have been under stress so much that those are underactive. The other 20% of the population are in fast you know, oxidation, their, their glands are overactive. They have different problems like, you know, maybe tendency towards diarrhea, high blood pressure, sweat very easily, you know, instead of the dry skin, you know, all this kind of stuff, but there's different elements that your body can use that will speed you up or slow you down. But, a, but a lot of this tend these tendencies have to deal with your family. You know, how toxic oh. was your mother when you were born that got oh, passed right. on to you? And so it's not just all environmental exposure that we have to deal with. And, you know, so there's people that have lots of energy, you know, that could have toxic amounts of aluminum, iron and manganese, you know, especially in men they have a lot of those toxic elements, especially the guy who's type A personality, you know, sweats very easily, that kind of thing. Even though he has energy doesn't mean that he's not toxic. It's interesting you mentioned there about personality type. Like how, how does that tie in with chemical toxicity? Years ago, uh, outside of Chicago, there's a jail, Cook County Jail, they did a study where they did hair analysis, uh, I think blood and urine as well, on these inmates. It was tied together that people who had toxic amounts of lead were the violent offenders. Wow, interesting. What came first? <laughs> <laughs> well, after spending many years understanding these enzyme binding sites in the cells and how the body's supposed to function, it's very clear that uh, having different elements changes a person's behavior and personality. Interesting. When I first started this process and learning about this, one of the pioneers of the science said that he could tell by someone's personality and looking at them what some of their imbalances are. And I thought, oh my gosh, that, that could never be. How, <laughs> how, could, how could that be? Now, years later, it's like I find myself going, oh my gosh, they're probably copper toxic or they're this or that, you know, you know anticipating looking at their test results because of their behavior or their thought patterns where they're at. So anything, any cells that don't have that, like I call them like new car parts are going to have dysfunction. Like the bones by design are supposed to have calcium. You know, the thyroid gland is more selenium than any organ in the body. The man's prostate has more zinc. So those are like new car parts. Wow. But with the food supply, the stress and the toxins we're exposed to the body a lot of times, even if the you know preferred mineral was there, it can't even get it to where it needs to go. So 
then it grabs something on the table of elements chart that's similar to that mineral, like cadmium is very similar to zinc. The body will use that. For calcium, the body will use lead. And that cell then isn't at 100%. Wow. No, but those affect emotions. They affect thoughts. And so, yes, you know, That's there's astounding. a whole mind-body connection because of energy. Yes. See, you know, when your car battery is dead, you know, it's sealed usually. It's just the ratio of the minerals in there that can no longer mm -hmm. hold the charge. So our bodies are electric. So if we don't have the right minerals, we're not going to get the electrical impulses yeah. to have the healthier thoughts and to have, you know, the, this, the preferred behaviors, I don't know, that bring yeah. blessings in our life. This, I'm really surprised. I didn't expect to hear today from you about <laughs> energy coming back to that, but it makes total sense. I mean, Anyone who studied chemistry, you know, you learn about the the energy and and you know our, all of these different compounds and what they and the and the minerals and what they that they've got these different electrical properties. Of course, it's going to change our energy. It makes total sense. Okay, that so people might be surprised to hear a lot of these kinds of linkages and that we've had you know, we, we could have different um, exposures. I'm a little curious just because I'm of the generation where we had a lot of mercury fillings. What kind of uh, symptoms do you see of mercury, um, having too much mercury in the body? Well, mercury is one of the most toxic poisons because like your body can use cadmium to have a cell function at 10%. Mercury is so toxic that it attaches to the cell near the enzyme binding site or at the enzyme binding site and permanently disables the cell's ability to function. It is absolutely so toxic, it's unbelievable. Wow. So mercury symptoms, well, you remember the story of the mad hatters years ago yeah. where they were lining hats with mercury? Yeah. So all the mental aspects of everything from anxiety to schizophrenia to bipolar to just everything that disrupts us that way will show up with mercury toxicity. And these days with ocean fish, unless yeah. you're eating small fish like sar sardines or herring, or maybe some sockeye salmon, you're going to have high amounts of mercury showing in your hair chart to the point of toxicity. Mm -hmm. So, you know, that's also going to disrupt your sleep, you know, and mercury is very similar to selenium. And with the thyroid gland, having more selenium than any organ in the body, a lot of times it will affect thyroid function. So then all the symptoms, you know, constipation, dry skin, brittle hair and nails, just tired. I mean, so there's like a whole host of things that people don't even realize that there's a connection with mercury. Wow. Yeah. Okay. I haven't had my mercury fillings removed or the, the amalgams, but just because there isn't really anyone where I live that can do that, um, you know, in the right way, but it's something I know I want to get done because it's, it's pretty critical. I've heard a lot about this mercury and how, oh, well, I have, a, I was head RA, so, you know, it could definitely be linked to that. And so when you have uh, like sensitivity to chemicals, is that a sign that you've got, that you probably have too many chemicals in your body? Yes. Also, you know, maybe leaky gut permeability, yeah. you know, so that it could mean that you have a low sodium potassium ratio or just overall low minerals or low potassium or uh, sodium. There's all these patterns that the cells can't function like they're supposed to. So you will just be in a more allergic sensitive state. Right. Right. Okay. All right. Uh, I'm just, uh, just came up this is it not just for me. It's also for people listening, but just talking about my own experience that I 
I was a swimmer all my life and I started to notice that I was getting headaches after swimming at the pool. And so I, then I really couldn't tolerate being around the chlorine anymore. And then, you know, like gasoline or any exhaust fumes, just sort of like, it's kind of like my body said, no more. Like you just don't, don't be around this stuff anymore. So I wondered, you know, if this is a buildup of chemical toxicity. Yes. And see the bromines, the chlorines, all that kind of thing are going to be impacting your thyroid gland. Yeah. And yeah. so then when it's not functioning, you know, so if we did a hair analysis on you, I would surmise that you might have low potassium. Okay. And that low potassium then is going to give you some of those symptoms because your body just can't function like it's a new car anymore. And so could someone just sort of take a potassium sub supplement or is that not the end? Well, well I, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> it, it's like the farmer does a soil test to figure out how much fertilizer to put on the ground. And he doesn't put nitrogen on the plant to raise nitrogen. Right. Nitrogen releases calcium bioavailability in tissues. So potassium is going to lower calcium, but it's going to interact some other things that it's kind of like a domino effect. And so it's not appropriate to give potassium to some people, even though their potassium may be slow, low. So there's too many factors to consider. Right. That's what I did when I was sick, you know, and got off medications. I used natural substances to medicate symptoms and right. I wasn't getting at the root. So therefore, you know, getting some it. guidance and then taking things to actually restore cellular function. So the body goes, oh my gosh, I won the lottery. The new car part is here. I can put it in. I can shed this toxic lead or this toxic cadmium yeah. and then you know begin to rebuild its your tissues and organs right so that's the appropriate way okay so we've talked about well and we're all exposed to more chemicals now than we ever were because there's so many chemicals in the environment now um so pretty safe to say that people are exposed to a lot of chemicals probably more than they used to be uh, I know there's new measures in place with, you know, protecting, like you said, now there's fume hoods and things like that. People aren't handling chemicals quite as much, but we're all exposed to more chemicals through our food and uh, products that we use, all these things. So um, you mentioned a hair analysis. So can anyone do a hair analysis? Like, sounds like something you could just do by, you know, through distance, right? Can just send yes. a sample of your hair in. Right. Yes. Um, my website, wellnessshoppingonline.com has the hair analysis and I have clients all over the world and it's a very meaningful test. Uh, there's a lot of people that have multiple unexplained symptoms. You know, they go to the doctor, they get all these tests done and they say, there's nothing wrong with you. Yeah. Well, you know, we're not all crazy. There's millions of people in that category and getting a hair analysis test, it's like, even if they don't list any of their symptoms and they get their test results, it's like reading their mail. You know, it's like, how did you know that, that I feel this way or <laughs> that I'm, you know, have it, this tendency and all this kind of stuff? Well, it's just because your cells at the cell level can't function. And if you stay in that state long enough, you're going to develop these issues. Right. And so right. it's you know, some simple recommendations and guidance that helps a person. And that's where the coffee enema comes in because, right. you know, when your body begins to regain cellular energy and has the new car parts there, your body's going to think it won the lottery and it's going to like dump poisons from your cells and organs to your bloodstream. And then you can have every imaginable symptom and you're going to go, Oh my gosh, this is poison to me when it's exactly what you need to do, but you need to slow down and let your elimination, you know, of these toxins increase so that you can kind of get this steady pace. And so that's why I recommend everyone. I give everyone the two week coffee enema challenge 
to do it every day. And then I'll never bother you to do it again. Cause it's like, think of this mountain pond when you go camping and you look in there and the water's crystal clear and there's fish swimming around. It looks so pristine. Go out there and waders and walk around. It gets so cloudy and mucky. You can't even see the fish. Right. So that's what happens in our body. So we got to go slow. There's a lot of practitioners that say, well, you just got to got to survive through it. You just got to live through it, toughen up. No, I'm going, that's stressful on the body. Let's be really toxic. We got to go slow, but then let's put a filtration system on that pond. That's like the coffee enema because your blood filters through your liver, like all your blood, like in three minutes. So we can clean up your bloodstream and alleviate a lot of the symptoms. And, you know, like I tell people, you know, it's like I can detox and feel like superwoman at the same time. It's because of these protocols. Let's just in case there's people that don't understand, like, I mean, it's kind of obvious what a coffee enema is, but let's just talk about it because it's not, you're not using your ordinary coffee that you have for breakfast. Let's just talk about what a coffee enema is and what, what you use to do it. Sure. Well, they were written about in the Dead Sea Scrolls. So they've been around for what, 3000 years. This is not new. <laughs> wow. And, and it's just basically taking some water with a little bit of coffee you know, it's not straight coffee at all. I mean, people have heard of plain water enemas, but yep. adding a little bit of brewed coffee, and I, you know, obviously recommend organic brewed coffee. Now, different people recommend different types of coffee beans, like the light roasted green, you know, was very popular with the Gerson method where he worked with cancer patients for years and the light roasted green coffee has higher amounts of caffeine and palmitic acid. So I'm a fan of more of the medium to the dark roast because that's more yawn instead of yin. And you find like you detoxify easier. And, and I did a thing where I was doing daily coffee enemas with the green coffee and literally my skin turned green because my body was making so much my liver was making so much bile and then not as much came out. So it's like I, the, the yawn was more detoxifying and I believe had a better benefit, you know, however, you know, if you're under the doctor's care and you have more critical health issues, like maybe cancer, maybe they're going to, you know, they were doing six to eight coffee enemas a day on these people with Dr. Gerson. So that's kind of a different ball game. Yeah. But, but for the typical person, you know, I recommend, you know, the medium to the dark roast organic coffee. And my favorite story, you know, because coffee and enemas have been around forever, almost, <laughs> is when Hitler's army was cut off from supplies. The doctor had been operating on soldiers and ordering plain water enemas one of the nurses began putting leftover brewed coffee from the pots in the enema buckets because she thought hmm, it's keeping the doctors going 24 seven. So let's see what it does. Well, an amazing thing happened. Pain reduction was dramatic. It wow. had actually became so famous that three universities in Europe started taking the coffee water solution and putting them in rats rectums and measuring what is really going on here. So it's super scientific as far as the benefits go. Interesting. And, and what they found out is that after 12 minutes, all of the palmitic acid and the caffeine from the rectum, from the solution were gone. And what it had done is it went up the portal vein, which looks like if you go out in the garden and pull up a tomato plant, those little root tubers, there's a vein that looks like that, that attaches on our intestinal tract and goes straight to the liver. Right. Well, this caffeine and palmitic acid go up the portal vein into the liver and stimulated bile production dramatically. Okay, now extra bile is fantastic because it has the ability to trap heavy metals and change the pH of the intestinal tract. So the good guys that we want in our gut biome 
have an easier time of surviving and thriving. But one of the things that was fantastic that they discovered is that it increased glutathione production over 600%. Oh my goodness. <laughs> now that is the master antioxidant yeah. in our bodies. Yeah. And that is so beneficial. And that alone makes a huge difference in a person's life because the problem with glutathione supplements is it's not getting across the gut. It right. is not getting into the body. Yeah, and, I've you know, so, so if you just kind of like switch from drinking so much coffee to putting some in the other end, you know, <laughs> it's for free, you know, you get extra bile, which is detoxifying and going to help you, you know, so much with your wellness journey. Then you get the master antioxidant, the glutathione, which is going to help have protective mm -hmm. properties for your body to be able to ro uh, recycle those rogue cells mm -hmm. and all those things. But that wasn't all that happened. Oh, really? It, it turned on multiple enzyme systems in the body. So for me, I'd say that the coffee enema gives a person more benefits than anything that I know of. So much so that if somebody says, I'm not going to change my diet, I'm not going to do this, I'm not going to do that. I just will do one thing, Eileen. What is it that you want me to do? And I say, the coffee enema. <laughs> just try it for two weeks. That's all. Okay. And you know, People used to go, well, you know, I can't lay down because my back is sore or my knees or like I laid down and I tried a coffee enema and when I got up, fecal water went everywhere because I, I couldn't hold it 12 minutes. And so, you know, for a while I coached people and said, well, you know, use a catch bucket and that's okay. If you can only hold it one minute, that's it. But at the end of two weeks, you're going to develop those muscles and you're going to be able to, you know, have a longer hold time. But I uh, had a client that inspired me to create the stand up anima fix. That's not a messy situation at all. Super easy okay. to use because I wanted to remove the excuses that I would hear from all these people. Well, right. I can't do that because I can't lay down or my knees or whatever. And he actually bought one of my bags years ago. I had these bags that you could turn inside out and clean because most coffee enema bags, you can't. And, you know, that gets gross. So he bought the stand up, you know, bag. Well, not the stand up bag, but he bought the bag and he stood up because he didn't want to lay down and he just rolled it. And so he got the enema fluid inside of his colon. And, you know, he had restless leg syndrome and was heavily so, medicated and it just like resolved his issues. Wow. So, so that gave me the idea. Okay, let's have a stand up coffee enema kit that that people can like pump, you know, just use it in the shower. And right. Then they so can it creates pressure. Right, right. Right. As much as you want, you know, you can go slow or you can go fast. You can control how much goes in. And then when you have the urge to eliminate, you just step out of the shower and sit on the toilet. And so, you know, that's the thing that I like doing is making procedures easy for people yeah, to for do. Because after all, it doesn't matter how many gizmos you have or how busy your life is. If you don't build it into your lifestyle, you're not going to get the benefits. Mm -hmm. Eileen, we had a question from Tamara who's listening today. Uh, I don't know if you can answer it or not, but maybe we can uh, just talk about it. So she says, uh, Dr. Jennifer Daniels mentions that we can have adrenal failure from coffee enema. She recommends drinking licorice root tea to support adrenals. Nobody else seems to have heard of this. Would love to hear your thoughts, please. Do you, do you have any thoughts on that, Eileen? I would say that coffee enemas are not the one-stop shop for our health needs. I don't think that there is a silver bullet. And I pr primarily use the coffee enema to help my body detoxify now, I've heard about people saying that the coffee enema 
will demineralize your body. Now, mm -hmm. I was in a car wreck and had to have knee surgery, had all the blood work done. And they were surprised because of where my numbers were. They were right down the middle. And so at the same time, though, that I was doing the coffee enema, I was doing things to support my adrenal glands. You know, I was taking the metabolic pack and the glandulars recommended by my hair analysis. So my adrenal glands actually improved. So I'd say it would be a case by case basis. Right. You know, for the person. Okay. All right. Thanks for that. Uh, thanks for the question, Tamara. So what would you say would be the first step for someone if they're thinking about a coffee enema? Like, how do they, if they've never done anything like this before, where should they get started? I would recommend locating some organic coffee. Ideally, it would be great to get some that's not contaminated with mold. And there are many coffee roasters locally because of the coffee craze that's out there. People are living on caffeine. They're spiking their adrenal glands by drinking, you know, tons of coffee every day. But the good side effect of that is you can almost always find uh, someone who can get organic beans and roast them for you. So you can put in your special order and pick up your coffee. So when they're you know, roasted and you get them right away, there's less chance of mold. Is that? Yes. Yeah. It's the now storage that creates the mold. Yes. Now there's some organic coffees that are like shade grown that are certified to be free of mold, but they also tout that they're low acid. Now we know from the scientific research that was done that we like to have that high palmitic acid, you know, for drinking those other coffees, having low acid is good but yeah. not necessarily for the coffee enema. But um, however, any organic coffee will do. You know, I think someone even from a non-organic coffee could get a benefit out of, you know, doing a coffee enema versus not doing it. Then there- what a, Okay, what equipment do they need? They sell bags and buckets. Um, one, uh, and, and those you're gonna have to like lay down and get up and it can be messy. Uh, we have a kit that has a glass jar, but uh, like one of those glass jars. Like a mason jar? Yeah, yeah. It comes in the kit. This is an ozone, ozone degasser, but it's the same you know, jar that basically you have an adapter that we screw on here and then i give you a travel bottle that's bpa lfda approved but you can put this for home use when you're not traveling there's a different draw straw that's longer here for the bigger bottle okay it just fits right in there so for the people that are listening uh what eileen has is a glass like mason jar with a screw top and um a hose that it's attaches to it. It's got a pump. So I guess that's how you get the pressure that you were talking about so that you can do the standing up, not lying down. And it's got a flexible rectal tip. So this kit is just perfect to be able to do, you know, a coffee enema standing up. And then okay. you just uh, get out of the shower and sit on the toilet and eliminate. That. That's the easiest and, you know, a lot of people have an aversion to doing a coffee enema because they think it's messy, it's unsanitary, all those kinds of things. And so this kind of like cleans the whole process up. And how much coffee would they put? Like they would put, can you just use tap water or would you use special water in there? I recommend spring water. Spring water. There again, you're getting minerals, you know, that are good for you. Mm -hmm. And I put just room temperature spring water in here and fill it up to about the top of the handle. And then I use a uh, percolator to percolate my coffee. However, you could use it at your standard coffee maker. You can boil it and strain it. You could use a French press. I find that the percolator 
really extracts all the goodness out of the copy in a short amount of time. It makes it very simple. And I have like a stainless steel, you know, percolator. So it's, you know, on the non-toxic lines and they just pour a little tiny bit in kind of like a one ounce or a two ounce shot glass, especially okay. if someone is sensitive to caffeine, you could even just put one teaspoon of brewed coffee in this 32 ounce jar. Wow. And is there any uh, minimum amount like once a week or do it every day or is it, can you do this too much? You can get benefits by doing this once a month, you know, okay. so you can do it depending on what else is going on, uh, you know, for your health goals or other programs that you're doing. If you're doing any detoxification program, on herbs or any kind of supplements during that detox, I would do this daily. Um, right now with, especially anybody who's been vaccinated to reduce that inflammation, getting all that glutathione, that would be hugely beneficial, you know, to helping improve their overall health. Mm -hmm. So I usually do, I've, I vary, you know, sometimes I do it daily for a couple of weeks and I'll do it maybe two or three times a week. You know, that boost of that glutathione is just so mm -hmm. important for anti-aging, for overall health and wellness. So it's like, let your body be your guide and right. do other things to make sure that your nutritional program is supporting your metabolic health. Right. So you, you, this isn't going to be the the uh, the one solution. You do nothing else for your health. It's kind of in conjunction with others. Eileen, this has been so interesting. Thank you so much. Where uh, actually, I got one last question I want to ask. I'm going to. Uh, I always ask this of my guests, and that's what's one action someone could take today. So this is about intentional living, cr intentionally creating wellness, creating the life that you want. What would you say is something someone could do today to that make their health better, improve their health. Make sure and be outside with your skin touching the earth surface <laughs> and getting some sunshine in the first three hours of sunrise or at sunset because we're indoors way too much and do that without sunglasses Yeah, because we want the light going in your eyes, impacting your glands to produce hormones and balance your circadian rhythm. I think a majority of people's health problems is we are indoors way too much. Yes, definitely. I love that, Eileen. That's so good. Okay. So where can people find out more about you? Where's the best place to go? Well, the website is createtrix, that's T-R-I-X, solutions.com. We're also on Instagram and YouTube. All right. I'm also going to put that link in the comments. So hopefully I still have it there. And there we go. Yep. So people can't, and we'll have the link also in the show notes. So, uh, and so do you sell these kits on your website? Yes, they are on createtrixsolutions.com. And do you ship anywhere in the world or just the U.S.? We, or? except for the the United Kingdom countries, they need to get a freight forwarder because of the new import duty laws. But last time I counted, I think we've shipped to 91 countries. Wow. <laughs> okay. All right. So interesting. Thank you so much. I know that you're on Instagram as well. So people can find you there just looking up Creatrix Solutions. Eileen, thank you so much for being a guest today. It's been really interesting. I, lo I love sharing this topic with the audience. It's a simple, inexpensive thing people can do at home, no matter where you're living. And, uh, and, and just you know, it's open to everybody, right? So thank you so much for sharing about coffee. And it's not a topic everyone wants to talk about, but I'm <laughs> so happy that you love to talk about it. <laughs> yes. Well, so thanks for being here. And thanks to the audience for watching. Have a great day.